Okay, good morning, uh, Anita and Sitikenu, the two uh, early birds. Thank you for joining class this morning. Uh, before we begin, Anita, can you please lead us in prayer? Sure, ma'am. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. As we come before you, Lord, help us to understand from your word, Lord. As ma'am is teaching us, Lord, and help us to understand, Lord, and Holy Spirit, you guide us and lead us, Lord. And I would like to give each one of us into your hand, Lord. Those who didn't join, Lord, help them to join, Lord. Give them a good internet connection, Lord. Let them let them join, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so last uh, Friday, we were looking at uh, the last chapter in Doctrinal Foundations. Uh, we were looking at... Uh, the doctrine of the end times and uh, we saw various scripture passages that tell us uh, that Christ's return is sure and it's soon. Uh, we also saw the scripture passages that tell us that, uh, you know, we do not know when Christ will return, but we know that his return is sure and soon. And in the light of that, we saw uh, you know, what should our response be as believers, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? What should be our uh, response? We just don't wait for uh, the coming of uh, Jesus Christ, but we are uh, active, engaging uh, in whatever work he has called us to do. We continue planning, we continue doing um, till he returns. Okay, so that is what we looked at on um on Friday. Now we look at the signs that uh, precede the return of Christ just before he comes again. Uh, what are the signs? Um, the first sign is that the gospel will be preached to all nations. Mark chapter 13 was uh, 10 and uh, Matthew chapter 22 was 14. Talk about this. It says that um, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Okay, so the gospel of uh, Jesus Christ will be preached in all the world, uh, and then the end will come. So that is the first sign, uh, the, or the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ, the return of Jesus Christ, that the gospel will be preached to all nations. The second thing is that there will be a period of great uh, tribulation. There will be a period of great hardship and suffering all across the world. We read this in Matthew chapter 13, verse 7 and 8, Matthew 24, verses 15 to 22, and Luke chapter 21, verses 22. Uh, 24 okay so uh, what will be the uh, hardships and sufferings uh, these passages tell us that uh, nation will rise up against nation that means and kingdom against kingdom that means there will be war uh, there will be earthquakes in various places there will be famine and uh, you know all this is the beginning of the birth pangs. So all of these references talk about uh, the hardships and the sufferings that, uh, you know, will come before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, Mark chapter 19, 13 verses 19 uh, to 20. Can one of you please read that, please? Mark chapter 13 verses 19 to 20. Mark chapter 13, ma'am, verses 19 and 20. Mark chapter 13 and verses 19. Because those will be days of distress, unequaled from the beginning when God created the world, until now, and never be equaled again. 20. If the Lord had not cut short days, no one would survive. But for the sake of elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. Thank you. Uh, so here it says that, you know, the, uh, the tribulation or the uh, hardships and the sufferings that will happen uh, before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will be so great that, you know, uh, it has never been since the beginning of uh, the creation. 
uh, and until now, it's never has been uh, such difficulties, such hardships, such will be the hardships and difficulties that people will face. Uh, but, you know, the Lord himself will shorten those days because no human being will be able to survive because of the severity of uh, uh, the tribulation and the difficulties and the uh, hardships. Okay. And also we see that during this time that there will be many false prophets who will rise up with signs uh, and wonders. We read this in Mark chapter 13, verse 32. And Matthew chapter 24, verses 23 to 24, where it says that false Christs and false prophets will arise and they will show many signs and wonders to lead us people astray. Um, and if possible, even the elect, those uh, who are believers, those who uh, are chosen by Christ, you know, even they will uh, fall away because of these false prophets and false Christs who will arise who will teach many uh, false doctrines and also will show uh, many signs and wonders. Now, apart from this, there will be many signs in heaven uh, or in the heavens. We read this in Mark chapter 13, verse 24 and 25. Matthew 24, 29 and 30. Luke uh, chapter 21, verses 25 uh, to 27. Uh, so can one of you read uh, Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 27, please? Ma'am, if you don't mind, could you please repeat that verse of uh, Luke? Sure. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 27. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 27. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nation will be in anguish and perplexity. At the roaring and tossing of the sea, men will faint from terror, oppressiveness of what is coming on the world. For the, heavenly, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Thank you. So here uh, we see that, you know, uh, uh, that during the days, of, but it says in, in, even we read in Mark chapter 13, verse 24 and 25, but in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heaven will be uh, shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. So we see just before the coming of Jesus, you know, there would be signs in heaven. Uh, just after the tribulation, there will, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give away its light. Uh, the stars will be falling from heaven um, and the powers in heaven will be shaken and people will be so terrified they'll be they'll faint uh, because of uh, all of these uh, signs that are uh, and wonders that are taking place and then you know the son of man that jesus christ will come in clouds with great power and glory then there will be coming of the man of sin and rebellion, uh, which is the Antichrist. And uh, Paul writes about this in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses uh, 1 to 10. Uh, so Paul writes to the Thessalonians that Christ will not come unless the man of sin is first revealed. And then the Lord Jesus Christ will destroy him at his Coming. So this man of sin is sometimes identified uh, with the beast in Revelation uh, chapter 13 and it's some, and is sometimes called the Antichrist, uh, which is also mentioned in 1 John chapter 2 uh, verses uh, uh, 18. So can one of you please read uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10? Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and our being and our being gathered to him we ask you brothers not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy report or supposed to have come from us saying that day of the lord has already come don't let anyone deceive you in any way for that for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed the man doomed to destruction he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called god or is worshiped so he set himself up in a god's temple proclaiming himself to be god don't you remember that when i was with you i used to tell you these things and now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time for the secret power of lawlessness is is already at work what one now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of his way and then all and then the lawlessness one will reveal whom the lord jesus will overthrow the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming the coming of the the coming of the lawless one will in accordance with the work saturn displayed in all kind of counterfeit miracles signs and wonders and in every sort of evil that deceives who are perishing they perishing because they refuse to love the truth so be saved thank you sir kenu so here we see that paul is writing to the church at uh, uh, you know tesalonica and he's telling them that uh, you know they thought that uh, uh, that the day of the lord has already come uh because some people said it's you know paul has mentioned this and so he's writing to them he says a day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and this this rebellion is talking about the man of lawlessness uh who is uh, the antichrist and he says this man of lawlessness will oppose uh you know uh, uh everything that is of god and he will exalt himself um against everything that is so called god or object of worship and also that he would take his uh, seat in the temple of god we know that uh, before the second coming of uh, uh, before the rapture you know the 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 temple that solomon built uh, will be rebuilt uh, in the same way uh, worship will be reinstituted there but we see that uh, when antichrist comes he would desecrate uh, the altar of sacrifice uh, and he would set himself up as god in that uh, uh, temple okay so we see here that he says he will take a seat in the temple of god proclaiming himself to be um god and how does he do all of these lawless uh, works it's because of uh, satan uh, with uh, satan's power and um, uh, uh he will be able to do all signs wonders um and with all wicked deceptions he will lead uh, many astray and all of them together will perish so before the second coming of jesus christ uh you know will uh, will be the uh, the man of uh, rebellion or the man of sin the man of lawlessness which is antichrist will rise up again and when christ comes he will um totally uh you know uh, uh, uh put him away uh, in the in the in the battle of amagedon and they will be thrown into the uh uh into uh, fire for uh, or hell for a certain period of time uh for 1000 year rule and then you know will be totally uh, thrown into uh, hell for eternity okay so that is about uh, the man of lawlessness uh before the second coming of uh, jesus christ there will be the man of sin and the man of rebellion that is antichrist who will rise up and set himself up as um, god okay um and we also see paul is uh, you know talks about uh, that many jews during this time of uh, tribulation the seven years of tribulation you know many jews will come to the saving knowledge of jesus christ and um, they will trust in jesus christ um, and they will be saved uh but that's what he talks about in Romans chapter 11 verse 12 and verses 25 to uh 
26. So he says, For I do not want you to, uh, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own estimation that a, uh, that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and, and thus all Israel will be saved. So he says, For a time being, you know, um, Israel have hardened their hearts, and hence the gospel is being preached to the Gentiles. And if you look at the uh, study of the book of Romans, we see uh, Paul talking extensively about how, uh, because of the hardening of the hearts of uh, the Jews, uh, uh, the Gentiles have been, uh, you know, have the privilege of uh, uh, receiving the gospel, accepting Christ, and they've been grafted into the uh, tree of life. But, you know, uh, God has not forgotten about uh, the Jews. He has not uh, let them to go, uh, to perish. But there will be a time when all of them, you know, will repent, will turn uh uh, to uh, uh, Jesus and they will be grafted back into the tree of life uh, and thus he says you know all Israel will be saved so many of them uh, during this uh, seven year tribulation period will be left behind on the earth uh, will take a stand for Christ and will uh, you know uh, be part of the thousand year millennium rule when Christ comes the second time and then we have the millennium <coughs> Sorry, the millennium means a period of a uh, thousand years. And uh, it's a very significant uh, uh, time in the end times, uh, as is mentioned in Revelation chapter 20, verses 2 to 5. So can one of you please read uh, Revelation chapter 20, verses 2 to 5, please? Revelation chapter 20, verses 2 to 5. Revelation 20, 2 to 5. He laid hold on the dragon, that serpent of all, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years we are finished but after these things he must be released for a little while and i saw uh, thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them then i saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witnesses to jesus and for the word of god who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Thank you. So here we see that before the coming of uh, Jesus Christ uh, will be the lawless one, the Antichrist. And then uh, Christ will come and uh, put away uh, you know, uh, will just by the breath of his mouth, uh, you know, put them away in the uh, 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 um, uh, in the battle of the Armageddon, and then we see that Satan uh, will be bound for a thousand years. Uh, he will be cast in the bottomless bottomless pit and will be shut up. And then we see that there will be a thousand years uh, rule uh, where we see the uh, you know those who have. Uh, uh, you know, who live for Christ, believers now will be raptured, will come, will live for a thousand years. And also for those uh, souls who, uh, you know, uh, uh, were uh, uh, beheaded because of their witness for Jesus and for the word of God uh, during the seven year tribulation period, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, had not received uh, the mark of the beast or their, on their forehands, on their uh, foreheads or their hands. Uh, uh, all of them will will reign uh, with Christ uh, in that thousand year uh, millennium rule here on earth. Okay, so that is about the millennium. And then uh, we also know that the rapture will take place uh, where the believers who are alive at the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ will be taken up uh, to meet the Lord in the air. And this is known as uh, 
the rapture and we find this uh, mentioned to us in first thessalonians chapter 4 uh, verses 16 and uh, 17 now after the millennium uh, rule what happens we see that there will be the final judgment uh, and the Bible affirms the fact that there will be a great final judgment of believers and unbelievers. We will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ uh, in our resurrected bodies. And, um, you know, we uh, the, the judgment will be proclaimed, uh, eternal destiny. Now, um, uh, will all of us who are believers in Christ, will we, will we be judged again? It says here that, you know, we will all appear before the uh, great white throne, as it says in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 uh, to 15. Uh, it says believers and unbelievers will uh, stand before the great, uh, uh, you know, uh, final judgment, that is the great white throne. And Christ himself will, ju will, uh, will judge us. So will we be judged? What do you think? Will believers be judged as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so if we are judged, for what will we be judged? Because we say once we are born again, all our sins are past, present and future sins are all covered. It's all forgiven. And uh, we have the assurance that we will uh, be, uh, we will live eternity with Christ in our glorified bodies, then why should we, you know, stand before the great white throne judgment? And if you're standing before the great white throne judgment, what will we be judged for? To give account of our stewardship. Okay, to give account of our stewardship, okay. And ma'am, if I say like we will be judged for one more thing, according to me, like being a Christian and being a saved person, it is our right, it is our duty of the Holy Commission to do like to preach the gospel to each and every one, to each and every creation. So like in that day of judgment, Father will be asking what you have done for me. Okay, thank you, Siddhi Kenu. Anyone else has any other thoughts? Okay, let's look at Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. Can one of you please read that? Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. Revelation chapter 15. 20, 20, verses 11 to 15. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11. Then I saw a great white throne, him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from the presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And the books were opened. Another book was opened, which was the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and the dead and the heads gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he has done. Then death and the hates were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Thank you. So here we see that there is a great white throne uh, judgment. And, uh, you know, we see that uh, uh, who is going to uh, be the judge? At this great white throne judgment, who is going to be the judge? I think it's Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus. Thank you. Because we read in uh, in First Second Timothy chapter four, verse one; Acts chapter ten, verse forty-two. And John chapter 5, verse 26 and 27, we read in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his 
kingdom. And Acts chapter 10, verse 42, it says, And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. So here we're talking about uh, Jesus Christ. So we know that uh, Jesus Christ will uh, judge at the great white throne. So the uh, what will the unbelievers be judged for? Uh, we read in Romans chapter 2, verses uh, 5 to 7, it says, But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient, continuous in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. So the unbelievers will be judged for their deeds, for the works that they have done, uh, for their hardness of hearts, um, for not uh, accepting uh, the gospel, for not accepting Jesus Christ. And uh, here we see that, you know, they will be judged for their uh, deeds. So this will be accorded, uh, include degrees of punishment. Um, uh, for we read that, you know, the dead are judged by what they had done according to their works. And the believers will also uh, be judged. We read this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, where it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So we know that, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we would, uh, as believers, we would also be judged, but the judgment will uh, be to evaluate the various degree of rewards. Uh, like uh, Isaac said, how good stewards we were of what God has entrusted to us. So we will not be judged for uh, the sins that we have uh, uh, done because our sins, past, present and future are all forgiven because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Uh, but we will be judged to evaluate uh, the various degree of um, rewards. Okay. So the fact that we would be judged uh, should, uh, you know, should not bring in any fear that, you know, that we will be eternally uh, condemned because we read in John chapter 5, verse 24, it says, uh, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who has sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but, but, but has passed from death into life. So this is uh, Jesus who's saying that, you know, uh, most assuredly those who hear his word, believe in him uh, and believe the one who has sent him has eternal life and they will not come into judgment. They will not be judged uh, for their sins, for their deeds that they have done in their flesh, but they have passed from death into life. That means we've already received uh, uh, the verdict that we would, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have passed from death to life, we've received eternal life, but uh, we would be judged to evaluate the various degrees of our rewards. Okay, so this also uh, gives us the great confidence that, you know, sometimes um, we are very hardworking, uh, we are faithful, we are committed, we are... Um, uh, trustworthy. We are good stewards of what God has given to us. I'm not just talking about those of us who are in ministry, but those of us who are also in the secular field, uh, working in various offices, doing our businesses. You know, sometimes we feel that we are uh, not uh, uh, duly paid. Uh, we're not receiving the wages for our hard work. Uh, you know, we are not recognized. We are not honored. We are not appreciated. Uh, for what we are doing. And that can bring in a kind of uh, uh, disappointment, of frustration, uh, you know, uh, and also uh, we come to a, a point where we just want to quit. We want to give up. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, the whole uh, aspect of the second coming of Jesus Christ is not just that, we you know, we are spending eternity in heaven, but also that we are going to receive a due reward for all, uh, you know, the hard work. We're going to receive the fruit of our labor. Uh, we are going to receive the, the harvest for what we have labored in. 
and uh, you know, uh, we see uh, scripture talks about the second coming of Jesus, uh, James chapter 5, where he's talking about the uh, farmer. You know, the farmer is looking, uh, you know, is working hard, uh, then waits for the early rain and the latter rain, uh, which is all in connection with the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ. And then, you know, the farmer after the latter rain, uh, just before the ripening of the grains, the train is so important, uh, especially we're talking about in the context of uh, Israel, where the early rain is sometime in 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 October and uh, November, you know, which is preparing the, the ground to receive the seed. And then the, uh, the farmer labors, works hard, and then waits for the latter rain that comes sometimes in March, April, and then the, uh, the, the grain ripens, and then there is harvest time. Uh, and all this, what James is talking about in James chapter 5 is in the context of the second coming of Jesus Christ, where he's talking about, you know, people who are uh, laboring hard and um, who are op oppressed, who are suffering, uh, who are not duly paid their wages and he's giving them the confidence that, you know, your labor in the Lord is not in vain because in the second coming of Jesus Christ, you will receive your reward. So, you know, you will receive the fruit of your harvest. You will see the harvest uh, for what you have labored in. And that is what he explains in James chapter 5. And elsewhere we see that, you know, uh, uh, we need to be good stewards of what God has given to us uh, because uh, 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 the judge will uh, ask us an account for, uh, you know, and will pay us uh, duly uh, uh, and reward us duly for what uh, we have done here on earth. So if you feel that, you know, you have been overlooked at your workplace, if you feel that you've been neglected, you've not been given the promotion, you've not been given the honor, uh, the respect, uh, you are underpaid, uh, and all of those things, you know, uh, we saw that, you know, in the light of second coming of Jesus Christ, firstly, uh, we need to be committed, sincere, uh, uh, you know, continue doing what God has called us to do and trusted to, us to do, uh, plan, prepare, execute, uh, do everything, not just sit back and think Christ is coming, his second coming is soon, so we don't plan, we don't do anything, no, but we labor, we labor like a farmer who, you know, uh, uh, sows the seed, waits for the early rain, waits for the latter rain uh, to receive the harvest. So it's in the context of the second coming of Jesus Christ. So also we need to labor hard, uh, you know, because we will be duly rewarded uh, uh, and you will uh, reap the benefits of your uh, reward uh, in the millennium kingdom. You know, we will be given positions of honor, of, uh, of uh, offices to hold in in the millennium kingdom when Christ himself rules. Imagine, you know, Christ himself is there ruling and we are holding different portfolios, different offices uh, according to, that will be according to what we have labored now, how faithful, sincere, committed, uh, diligently we have worked uh, you know, uh, and and how we have worked with honesty and uh, integrity. So that is uh, the assurance that we have. That is what will keep us, uh, you know, uh, running our race with perseverance because we know that we are going to get uh, the reward. Of course, the reward is not just in the millennium kingdom or uh, when we go up to heaven, but we will also reap uh, the rewards here and now, uh, just like the early rain, you know, uh, yes, the, the the farmer is going to reap the harvest. Uh, it also talks about, uh, you know, we receiving the harvest even before the second coming of Jesus Christ. We will receive our rewards here and now. And also we have this great assurance that we will duly receive uh, our rewards according to the degree of how we have labored, how sincere we have been, how faithful uh, we have been. So that is uh, an encouragement for all of us uh, to continue to uh, be sincere and faithful, uh, even though you are not being recognized or you've been honored. Don't look for recognition and honor. Just be sincere and faithful to what God has entrusted to you. 
uh, you know, uh, doing the work of Christ and what he has called you to do with honesty, integrity and uh, humility and Christ likeness. Okay. Um, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, uh, who do, uh, but there is condemnation for those who do walk according uh, to the flesh, but there is no condemnation for those who walk according to the uh, spirit. Okay, so we are not condemned. Christ does not condemn us and we will not be condemned even on the day of judgment, but we will receive our um, rewards. Angels will be also judged. Uh, this is also talking about the fallen angels where they will be judged and thrown into eternal fire, that is Satan and his demons. Um, and this uh, scripture very clearly affirms that God will entirely uh, be just in his uh, judgment because we looked at the nature of God uh, in the beginning chapter. We know that he is uh, a God who is not partial. Uh, he's a just God uh, and no one will be able to complain against him on that day uh, because God is the one who judges each one impartially according to their uh, deeds. So in the light of all of this, uh, or the reality of this uh, final judgment, uh, we know that, uh, you know, it assures us that justice will be carried out. Just like I said, you know, some of us are facing injustices, uh, even when it comes to our own, uh, you know, workplace or even our family life. You know, some of you mothers working hard, uh, and all you have is uh, people grumbling, grumbling, grumbling all the time at you. Uh, there is no recognition. There's no honor giving to mothers, fathers for their hard work. Uh, you know, but oh, we see that um, justice will be carried out. Um, and, um, you know, even if you feel that you have been unjustly treated in your workplace, uh, you know, continue with perseverance, continue with joy, continue with the right attitude uh, without grumbling, complaining and murmuring. Uh, that is what even James talks about in James chapter 5 in the whole light of the second coming of Jesus Christ and those who are uh, unjustly being treated. He says, you know, do not complain, grumble and murmur because the judge is standing at the door. You will be judged. So how should our response be even though uh, we are uh, going through hardships, difficulties here on earth? Uh, we are not getting uh, the due rewards uh, for what uh, we deserve or the due wages and we are being under undermined. We are uh, being overlooked. Uh, you know, uh, uh, James tells us that we need to be patient. Uh, we need to persevere, but we should not complain, grumble and murmur because we will be judged if we complain, grumble and murmur. And we see the Old Testament, the Israelites, in spite of seeing all that God had done for them from the time that he had taken them out of Egypt, divided the Red Sea, provided them water and manna, but still the people grumbled. You know, and God was so fed up with their grumbling and he says he will wipe up that whole uh, generation and he tells Moses that he will, you know, uh, create a new whole new uh, generation. He was so fed up with their grumbling that in numbers, you know, when uh, when the, 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 the people of Israel uh, were sent to spy the land of Canaan and they come back and 10 of them uh, grumble and murmur and they say you know we will be killed by these Canaanites they are like giants we are like grasshoppers let's choose another leader and go back to Egypt uh, you know and God tells Moses you know how long will these people grumble and he says 10 times they've grumbled against me so you see even God is counting the number of times uh, these people were grumbling and murmuring and Paul talks about uh, this in uh, Corinthians, he reminds the people, don't grumble and complain and murmur uh, because you will be judged like the Israelites were judged in the Old Testament. So uh, in the whole reality of the final judgment, we know that we will ultimately get justice. Uh, so be patient, uh, persevere, continue running your race with joy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, consider it joy, you know, when you're facing trials, that's what uh, James writes in James chapter one, uh, you know, and so we see that we need to be joyful, 
in our attitude, um, continue doing what Christ has purposed for us because we know when he comes, he will come as a judge and we will receive uh, justice. The second thing is in the light of uh, the judgment, the final judgment, uh, you know, we know that uh, uh, Christ has freely forgiven us. Imagine just saying, uh, you know, just asking God to forgive us of our sins and asking him to be the Lord and Savior of our lives. All our past, present and future uh, sins are all forgiven. Uh, you know, when we have been forgiven, uh, you know, we need to also forgive others freely, just as God has forgiven us. Uh, you know, we need to forgive uh, others. And uh, in the, in the light of the final judgment, we, uh, it enables us to forgive others freely, uh, you know, because uh, if we have been wrong, we can place that in God's hands, knowing that in the end, you know, he will judge all those who uh, have done things that are wrong, uh, uh, the wrong deeds that they have uh, done. So, you know, you just let go, you forgive, let uh, let them go into God's hands because you know that uh, you know he's a righteous judge who will judge them according to what they have done but in your on your side you know be clean uh, let go and forgive uh, others and then the reality of the final judgment uh, you know it motivates us to live a life of faithfulness uh, of good works of good deeds Good works means not, we know that none of our good works can achieve salvation, cannot achieve forgiveness of sins, cannot take us to heaven. Uh, it's not our good works, but, you know, it's talking about good deeds uh, done in honoring God uh, because we are his children now, uh, honoring him for what he has done on the cross so that we can receive forgiveness of sins, that we don't no longer stand condemned. We will not be judged for our sins but we will just receive the rewards uh, for the being good stewards and how faithful uh, we have been. So if you want to receive a good reward, if you want to hear this line, you know, from the, from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, well done, my good and faithful servant. Just imagine just hearing that from, uh, from God is uh, something that is worth uh, giving up everything is worth running our race with perseverance. It's worth uh, being patient, enduring, fulfilling the task. I'm sure, you know, when your boss tells you very good, how excited you are. Or if your parents say, hey, great, good job, or your principal or your teacher says, it brings such immense joy. It kind of, uh, 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 you know, gets uh, stuck in our memory lifetime that this teacher, this principal acknowledged us, this person acknowledged us. Uh, we are so excited. We are so happy. Just imagine uh, receiving the statement, well done, my good and faithful servant from uh, the most high God. You know, uh, so that gives us the assurance, that gives us the joy, that gives us the, uh, the strength to continue to persevere, to live a faithful life, knowing that... Uh, all that we are doing, our labor in the Lord is not going to be in vain. We will be duly rewarded. And also the final uh, judgment uh, and the second coming of Jesus Christ is not something that, you know, hey, let me be faithful and sincere in my work, in my task, uh, so that I can be rewarded, so that I can be, uh, you know, uh, receive an office in, uh, you know, or be someone important in the millennium kingdom, hear this from Jesus and I get to heaven. Uh, but it is something that should motivate us to share the gospel with those who are lost. Imagine they are going to stand at the white throne judgment along with us, but just being, you know, led off into hell is such a sad thing. So those of us, those in our family, our extended family, uh, our colleagues, our neighbors uh, will not be there in heaven with us. And, uh, you know, it's our responsibility, even as it's a great privilege for us uh, to receive salvation, a great privilege for us that we don't stand condemned before the great white throne judgment, that we will receive our reward. Uh, but it should also motivate us to share the gospel like never before the urgency of the time is so quick now because we know we're looking at the signs of the times 
We know that Christ's coming is soon. And we also know that before his second coming, that the gospel will be preached to all nations. And God is counting on each one of us. And that will be something, a reward that we will receive. So let's uh, do that diligently, take it up, to share the gospel with whoever we meet, uh, and let our lives also be a gospel that people will see and know our uh, living Savior who is going to come back again uh, and let them not miss the opportunity of uh, being with Jesus for uh, eternity. Okay, so that is about the second coming uh, and the end times and the second coming of Jesus Christ and the great white throne uh, judgment. I've given you all the details about uh, a rapture, the first half of the tribulation, the second half of the tribulation. Uh, saw that all. I thought I just mentioned that in the class in, uh, in Christology. Also mentioned about Antichrist, the mark of the beast. Uh, the opening of the seventh seal, seven tr uh, some trumpet judgments, the seven, uh, and uh, and uh, the war that will happen, the uh, Armageddon, and also talked about uh, you know the second coming of Jesus and um, the Millennium Kingdom. Okay, so I I mentioned all of that briefly. You will learn about this in detail in uh, your next semester in the second year. Uh, you will learn that in the first semester in the second year. Okay, so any questions? Any questions? No questions? Okay, uh, I was supposed to post uh, the, the third assessment on April 11th, that was on Monday, and I missed that. Uh, I'm extremely sorry about that. Can we just, uh, is this okay if we can move it to some other date? Is that fine? Yes, no. Can we move that to uh, April 18th? That is uh, Monday. Is that okay? Because you have another uh, assessment on April 20th. That is your doctrinal foundations on April 20th. But the last assessment for Christology, uh, can we have it on April 18th, please? Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Silatoli, Anita, Lubeka, Abu Bakr. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Anyone's uh, not okay with April 18th for Christology? Okay. Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, so we've completed our course content. So this will be the last class. Uh, yeah, I I will uh, I will uh, yes, Lubega, I will do that. I will just send it across uh, to you uh, by this week or my maybe the beginning of uh, next week. You will receive uh, the results for your ass assessment. Yes. Okay, uh, this is our last class. I hope uh, you've uh, uh, learned, received uh, from doctrinal uh, foundations, your systematic theology. You learned quite a bit. I hope and trust that it has not just become, uh, has come to you as knowledge, but has, uh, you've grown in your understanding of uh, God, his ways, his nature, his attributes, um, uh, his uh, person, his work, what he has done, 
uh, and also uh, given you a, a sure foundation about uh, the various doctrines in the Bible. Uh, I hope that's brought about a good understanding. Uh, there's clarity and um, also, you know, the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Silatoli. If you still have any questions, any doubts, uh, feel uh, free to, uh, you know, uh, uh, post your uh, questions on the stream page and I'll answer that. Uh, if not, we'll end class now. Our time is already up. Thank you all for uh, journeying through this course. Uh, it's wonderful. It has been a wonderful learning experience for me as well. And I hope it has been a blessing to all of you. Uh, God bless you all. And I will post your assessment for Christology on Monday and Doctrinal Foundations on 20th. And you will also receive your uh, grades. If you have any questions uh, regarding your grades, um, answers, uh, please feel free to reach out and I will, uh, uh, you know, I will, uh, you know, explain or uh, give you the right answers. Uh, if you have any doubts about the questions or anything that has been uh, given the assessment, uh, you can always feel free to ask. Okay. Thank you all so much and uh, uh, have a blessed uh, day and a week ahead and see you in the next semester. Okay. Thank you.